welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. It's been a big week for South Africa's just energy transition. Terence Kuma joins me to reflect on developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. It began last Friday with a World Bank announcement. Yes, the World Bank announced a $497 million loan for the Kamati repowering and repurposing project. That, that's the Eskom power station that was decommissioned at the end of October. And that money will flow from on a repowering side to 150 megawatts of solar, 70 megawatts of wind, and 150 megawatts of battery energy storage. So using the grid infrastructure there, the, the evacuation capacity that's there, uh, that uh, is very in short supply across the country, and really uh, getting uh, green electrons into the grid through that, and it's important that Eskom is also now getting involved directly in renewable energy. Other than the Sierra Wind Farm, all the other projects have been developed by IPPs. So this is one way that Eskom can get through this concessional loan and a, a little bit of grant finance, which I imagine will go to the, the non-repowering initiatives that will happen around Kamati, the training, the skills development, the agriculture projects, uh, the possibly the manufacturing of microgrids. Those are also part of that. So that really kicked off uh, the, the big week, as you said. Then government unveiled the Just Energy Transition Investment Plan. Yes, on the same day, in the after, late on in the afternoon last Friday, the president unveiled the Just Energy Transition Investment Plan. This was an important document. You know, between COP26, when we entered into the Just Energy Transition Partnership with those number of developed countries, uh, where there was an offer of $8.5 billion uh, uh, to support South Africa's just transition efforts, the decarbonisation, the repowering of power stations, and also the retraining, etc. Uh, there needed to be a sort of a, a framework in, in which this money could go into. And South Africa wanted th this to be a South Africa-led and developed plan. And over the last year, this has been developed and consulted, uh, but it was only released just days before COP27, so quite late in the day, which meant it hasn't been pu fully publicly consulted in South Africa. But uh, it was released on, on just days before COP27, and it's a major milestone because it provides the framework now into which not only the $8.5 billion uh, can flow, but other partnerships and other concessional finance that we're hoping to sort of crowd in uh, following this initial partnership. All the money is going to flow into these three areas of the electricity money, mainly, and then uh, some electric vehicle and green hydrogen development. The investment plan has received high level support at COP27. So, yeah, so it was important that we got the plan out. We just made that deadline. And then uh, President Ramaphosa was able to meet with his counterparts from the UK, from France, from the US, uh, you know, that, and Germany and the European Union. And where that plan got high level endorsement from all those presidents and uh, strong support from all those presidents. And uh, it was, so it was a, f a feature of the COP27, of the leadership summit that took place right at the start of COP27 that South Africa now had this just energy transition um, investment fr uh, plan and framework for other countries, not only these initial partners, but the initial partners were able to endorse it, which is a, a big step. That support has also started translating into actual funding. Yes, there's been a lot of unhappiness about the slow pace, one of getting that plan out, as I mentioned, and then the, why is the money not flowing? But without this plan, it was never going to flow. And then immediately after the endorsement of the plan, uh, AFD of France uh, and KFW of Germany, the two big development banks, were able to announce 300 million euro apiece loans that go directly into the national treasury at very good concessional rates. So at 3% interest rates, and the other one, the AFD loan, a 3.6% interest rate, 20 year, 10 year with a five year grace period. And this is about, um, Treasury says, a, a sort of a good five percentage points better than what they could get at commercial rates. So it really is concessional. 
And it goes into the, the National Revenue Fund. Yes, it's for the just energy transition, but it immediate, immediately helps with the fiscal balance and the lowering the cost of our interest payments because it goes into the bigger kitty. So that, that was also very interesting that it wasn't an earmarked or ring-fenced amount from these two development banks, but goes in and sort of immediately really, really relieves some pressure on our, our debt, our, this high level of debt stock and the interest payments related to that. What's likely to happen next? So the next step, I think, is the consultation back at home. Not so much on the plan, which has been endorsed by the cabinet, so it has cabinet approval, but on how we go about implementing this and the sequencing of this is very important. I think it's going to be important that the just components of these plans are put front and center and are quite high visible in the first stages. And then definitely electricity has to be the focus uh, immediately as we go into implementation phase. And that's really about, if you really want to have the highest impact in electricity, yes, there's the sort of commodity repowering and there's going to be several other power stations to follow in the next few years. That's very important, that repowering the renewable energy, the battery storage. But I think vitally to unlock this uh, much more resilient future electricity economy it's or supply industry, it's going to all be about getting that transmission grid beefed up and strengthened and then the distribution networks at the municipal level strengthened. So that should be a big portion of the, and the sort of front end loading of the sequencing. But obviously we need to see, that is in, that's my view, and I think the view of quite a few electricity commentators. But we'll have to see what also comes out of this consultation. The key issue is not to lose moment, momentum now that we at last starting to see the money transferring not just the, you know, talk about the money. The money's actually coming in. It's into the National Treasury's account. Two, three big loans, uh, the World Bank, uh, the KFW, and the uh, AFD loans are big and important. But in the bigger scheme of things, nothing like at the scale that we need. The investment plan over the next five years talks about 1.5 trillion rand worth of investment that's needed to get this transition moving in the right direction for electricity, electric vehicles and green hydrogen, but with electricity being the, the major portion of that. That's sort of a $99 billion envelope. Now we know that what the developed countries have offered is 8.5 billion, <laughs> so it's, no, it's, it's less than 10%. We need to scale that up and we need to use that concessional finance to catalyze and crowd in the private investment and other concessional investment that could flow from other countries. But it's now all, should be all hands on deck about implementation, getting these projects visibly on the ground and starting to use this money in a way, one, to end load shedding as quickly as possible. And that's, uh, that's going to be more, more difficult. That is a huge task. It's a, it's a huge, difficult task because of the backlogs. Um, but then also to start really aggressively decarbonizing South Africa's economy because this is a huge risk, not only to us living here because of the climate risks that are associated with, it, with high carbon emissions, but also to our, tra our tr open trading economy and our products are going to face more and more carbon border uh, tariffs or adjust uh, border adjustments. So we need to uh, get this going as fast as possible. So it's all about implementation now, implementation. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.